Hello, welcome to Bite Size Coding Time with the Port Moody Public Library. Today, we're going to take a look at how you can tell your sprites to go where you want them to go or show up where you want them to be by using coordinates. You may have heard about coordinates from your math classes. And today, we're going to take a look at how coordinates work in Scratch. When I think coordinates, the first thing that came to mind is a treasure map. Yeah, I know. There seem to be a lot of pirate references in these coding videos, and I really don't know why. But say this is my treasure map, and I need to describe to my friends where the treasure is. Now, if I look at this and they can't see the map, I will say, OK, you're on the island. Go to the uh, left side of the island and near the coast, but not all the way there. And then see if you can find free trees. And when you find the free trees, then the treasure is buried somewhere nearby, maybe to a little bit to the left and a little bit farther down. Yeah, that's where you're going to find the treasure. Now, give those were the instructions that I give my friends, I'm pretty sure that it's going to take them quite a bit of time to find that treasure because my instructions, they were not very precise at all. They are not very helpful in pinpointing where that treasure is exactly. So I need to do a little better. I need to better describe where the treasure is. So when I think about in real life, give I'm at the library and somebody is going to come pick me up and they don't know where the library is, I will have to give them the address, right? And I'll tell them that, okay, well, the library is at 100 Newport Drive and it is basically at the intersection of Ioko and Newport. Now, if I just say like Ioko, that doesn't help them because Ioko is a long street, which part of Ioko it is, right? So I need to give them a little bit more precise instructions. So I'm going to tell them the intersection where you can find the library. And so thinking about that example, well, what if I can divide my map into sort of like a grid? And then maybe then I can sort of give them an intersection of where the treasure is. So if I do something like this and I, I draw lines, vertical lines and horizontal lines, now I can say, well, the treasure is where this line crosses that line. That's where I can find the treasure. Well, that's great. That's a little better than my early instructions, but still, what is this line and what is that line, right? That's not very precise. And we know, again, computers need very precise instructions. They need things that are specific or else they wouldn't know what to do. So in my example just now, we have streets and they have names, right? That's how I can tell people which street it is that when I'm talking about the street, I'm talking about Ioko, I'm talking about Newport. In scratching coordinates, instead of naming them with names, we name these lines with numbers. So all the vertical lines and all the horizontal lines, they all have numbers. It might look something like this. Now you will notice that in Scratch, the numbers don't start from left to right or right to left, right? They actually start right in the middle. In the middle is where you will find line zero, whether it is a vertical line or a horizontal line. Everything starts right from the middle. And if we're looking just at the left and the right kind of lines here, you notice that when I go to the right, my number increases. It goes one, two, and three. And if I go to the left, we get negative numbers, minus one, minus two, and minus three. And all these lines that help us figure out how far right something is or how far left something is, they're called the X coordinates. So in this case, my treasure is located where the X coordinate is equal to minus two. 
So now with that, I have a way to describe how far left or how far right my treasure is on the island. So now I need the up and down, right? I need to tell my friends how far up in the island or how far down in the island they can find this treasure. So we need the y coordinates. Again, starting from the middle, that's where we will find zero. Going up is positive number, one, two, three, and so on. And going down is negative numbers, minus one, minus two, and minus three. So in this case, my treasure has the y coordinate of zero. It is right where the zero line is. So now that I know the x coordinate and I know the y coordinate, I'm now able to describe the intersection. And my treasure is located at x equal minus two and y equal zero. And with that precise description, my friends would have a much better luck finding that treasure. But wait, someone moved my treasure. Now instead of being where it is, it's got moved and now it's somewhere over there instead. Well, how would you describe this treasure to my friends? Can you take a look at the map and see whether you can figure out the coordinates for this new treasure spot? I know you can. It is x equal to 1, because this is where this line is, and y equal to also 1 in this case. So now you can see that the treasure is more on the upper right corner, right, of the map here. But remember, upper right corner is pretty generic, but x equal 1, y equal 1, is very precise and that is exactly what my friends need and what the computer need when you're coding in Scratch. Now, now that you have a basic idea of how coordinates work, we know that everything starts in the zero. So in the zero, right in the center here is x equals zero and y equal to zero. When we go code in Scratch, how many lines are there? Well, let's take a look. In Scratch, we again begins with 0, 0, right in the middle here. But there are 240 lines to the right and 240 lines to the left. So gives you have a character that needs to go from one side to the other, it will take them 480 steps, 240 plus 240 to walk from this side all the way to the other side. And going up and down, we have 180 steps going up and 180 steps going down. So again, if you go all the way from the top, all the way to the bottom, it is 360 steps. So now you know how many steps there are and how many lines and how much of a small grid this is, you might figure out why if you have a code, they say move 10 steps, it seems so tiny. I can actually demonstrate this. Now, the trick here is to see if you can spot the scratch cat. Can you see the scratch cat on the screen? Yeah, it's very tiny. It's right up here. You can see it is sitting right up there. And where is the scratch cat? If you have to tell somebody, it is at x equals zero and y equal 100. That's where my scratch cat is. Now, if I code it so that every time I press the right arrow, it takes 10 steps. So I'm going to press the right arrow now and it's going to take 10 steps. You can see right there. And then if I do another 10, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I press that ten times 
10 times 10 is 100. So you can see it has moved exactly 100 steps. And if I go down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you can see it has gone down a hundred steps and now my scratch cat is located at x equal 100 and y equal 0. Okay? So you can see that for the whole screen you have about 480 steps to play with left and right and 360 steps to play with from the top to the bottom. So if I make this a little smaller so you can see the code here you can see that's where my scratch cat is. So let's bring up the scratch cat and you can see that's where the code is by going up and down using the arrows. And when it first showed up, you notice that it showed up right into, I have told the scratch cat to go to X equals zero, which is right in the middle, and Y equals 100, which is right there. That's why the scratch cat showed up there. So. If I take the scratch cat, which is right here, super tiny, and if I take it and move it, uh, let's go over here, okay? Anytime you move your character, you can find its new location, its X and Y coordinates by looking down here. You'll see that now it's telling me that this sprite, which is the cat, is highlighted right now. The X coordinate is minus 168, and the y coordinate is minus 55, right? If I take the scratch cut, I move it over here. Now you can see the coordinates change. So the new coordinates now we can see is that x is equal to 88 and y is equal to minus 71. That's the new location for our scratch cat. Now let's make scratch cat a little bit bigger so we can see him better. So I'm going to turn that in back into 100 in the size here. That's our scratch cat. Now say I'm doing a simple animation and I want scratch cat to kind of walk from over here, starting here and go all the way down here, right? Very, very easy. But that simple animation requires us to tell the computer where to start and where to finish. And that's where coordinates come in. So the easiest way to do this is first of all, Take your mouse, grab Scratch Cat, and drop Scratch Cat where you want it to start. So I'm going to put Scratch Cat right here. And so now we know that the minute you let go of the mouse, the coordinates will update for us automatically. So you can see these are this new location, the new coordinates. But not only do they update over here, it also update in the motion block. And we know we need the motion block to control movements. So if I look at the motion block on the left hand side here, I can see that the go to X and go to Y block has the same coordinates as where Scratch Cat is right now because it's automatically updating that for us. So I know I've got the starting point is exactly where I want it to be. So let's just add the top part here. I'm going to go into events and I'm going to say when I press the say the uh, A key, I want the scratch cat to go to this spot, right? Which is X equal minus 187, Y equal 76. And I want scratch cat to go over here. Now, if I go back to the motion block and I take the one that say glide one second to X and Y, you can see the numbers are the same because that's where scratch cat is right now. So it hasn't updated it for me yet. So I don't want to take this block just yet. I actually want to do the same thing. I want to take my mouse, pick up Scratch Cat, and drop Scratch Cat where I want Scratch Cat to finish. So gliding over here. And now that I have the new coordinates, I can go back to the motion block and take that glide block here. And you can see the numbers have matched. They have been updated. So now I know if I press the A key, it's going to start somewhere up there and then it's going to go all the way down here. So let's give that a try. I'm going to press the A key on my keyboard right now and we that's where Scratch Cat goes. So I can then tell the computer exactly where I want Scratch Cat to show up and then where I want Scratch Cat to be in the end, at the end of the animation. And that's how we can use coordinates. So the again, the simple way 
is to move your scratch card first to where you want it to go so that the numbers automatically update for you. And then you can just grab those blocks and then you don't have to manually put the numbers in and just make it a little easier. So that is coordinates in Scratch. I hope you find this tutorial useful in helping you give precise location and specific instructions to the computers so that you can place your sprites wherever you want them to be. Now, if you have any questions about coordinates, please leave us a comment in the section down below. If you have made a Scratch project and you want to share with us, please put a link to your project down in the comments also. We would love to see what you do with these coordinates. Until next time, happy coding, and we'll see you again next week. Bye.